Welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me for the first ever questioning podcast. Today I'm joined by my first ever guest, Katie from Creature Caps. You can find a link in the description to her Etsy page where she sells handmade hats made from American yarn. And today we're going to be talking about International Women's Day and a few other women's issues. All right. Hello, Katie. Thanks for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. And last week was International Women's Day, so let's just jump right in and talk about that. Do you have any <laughs> opinions on International Women's Day? International Women's Day. I, I don't even know why this needs to be a day at this point. Like, don't get me wrong. Women are important and should be celebrated, but that's like saying you need a holiday for everything. Although I guess at this point there kind of is a holiday for everything. Uh, but Women's Day in general. Okay. You're celebrating womanhood by not going into work and protesting society being mad at you, I guess. I don't know. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I try to understand it. I just feel like women don't have it that bad. I mean, it seems like there's a little bit of irony in Women's Day being a protest of not working when there was such a you know big movement for women to have the right to work it yeah. seems like you'd want to celebrate working and having freedom to work and do those things rather than not showing up to work yeah like i i don't care who you are if you just don't show up to work one day you're gonna get fired and it's not gonna be because you're a woman or a man or whatever if you don't show up to work because you decided to go to a protest I would fire you. I would be very upset. If I come into work and all of my coworkers didn't show up because they're all women, which most of, most of them are. I work in a place that's a lot of women. And if I show up to work and all of them are gone because it's National Women's Day, I'm going to be really pissed and just be like, okay, screw you women. Guess we're not hiring any more of them. <laughs> they're just not going to come into work every now and then. Like That's you know skewed a little bit, but how I see it, is if everyone's doing this thing, why would I expect them not to do this thing? Yeah. Plus, I mean, with with women and men at least, I mean, women make up about half the population or whatever, right? So, I mean, if you're talking about half the people, then why don't we have an International Men's Day? There's which I'm sure anything. there's a lot of people that think, eh. That's every day is Men's Day. Every day is Men's Day, but n no, it's not. I no. mean, it's, it's not Men's Day. It's not. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't want there to be an International Men's Day. I don't give a shit. I don't think that we should have one. But I, I just don't see the difference between that and having a Women's Day. Why, why should women want an International Women's Day any more than men want an International Men's Day? Yeah. And, you know, maybe I'm just not hip to all this social, so, so social justice crap. I don't know. I... I just don't see why a big protest in support of women, only by women, makes any sense to me. And that you were supposed to you were supposed to not go into work to show what it's like to not have women in the workplace. But you were also only supposed to shop at women run establishments. How are you supposed to shop somewhere? I thought you weren't supposed to spend any any money. No, you were still supposed to spend money, but okay. only at women, women run and operated businesses oh. to help support women in business to try and even the playing field between women and men. Well, that makes sense, but I think that there might have been some disagreement then because the things I was seeing online were like, don't spend money or you're a terrible woman. So I, there was probably just disagreement even between the, the people that were a yeah. part of it that were like, well, should we spend, should we not spend money or should we spend it for... For women businesses. And, and is it for women's rights or was women's business rights or freedom of sexuality? I feel like it was all of those things and none of those things at the same time. Yeah, yeah I think it, it was just too much of a split. Like oh. it was just such a big event that it's, it's like general cause kind of got broken down and lost. The other thing is if, if no women show up but we still decide that we need to keep businesses open, presumably then just all the men show up that day, right? But then doesn't that, if all the men show up and get the job done, then that doesn't prove that we need women. Yeah, like, uh, you're just uh, disproving it, your point. It, you're proving that without the women being there, the men, who probably are about half of the workforce wherever you work, can do all of their work plus all of your work. 
Well, or at least, I mean, at the very least, it, it says that there's enough men out there to do the jobs already. Yeah. Not that the women are less capable or that, like, men can just do it all necessarily, but that not even that we don't need the women or that the women are less valuable, but just that without women, the, the jobs would still get done. Like so still why, done. why then should we care? Like, why does it matter if it's a woman or a man doing it at that point? If the job needs to get done, it's going to get done. But the other thing is, if if you're saying don't shop and don't spend any money either, then you aren't going to have the same impact. So if you're like, well, what does the economy look like without women? Well, you don't have any women workers, but then you don't have women shopping, and so you don't need as many workers. So if you get rid of half the the population workers, but you get rid of half of the population's consumers and you just have men buying everything for a day and working for a day, then it seems like you wouldn't see that big of a difference. The men would just do all the shopping that day in a relationship, or the women would just shop the day before or the day after. Yeah. Even if you completely, if the women completely just brought down the level at which they were, were purchasing stuff, I mean, you would still have, you have less workers and, and less consumers. So, I mean. It would it, just balance out. Yeah, it seems like for the most part it would just balance out and you wouldn't have proven anything yeah <laughs> like don't get me wrong i love the fact that i as a woman can go to work every day yeah and that's perfectly fine and not frowned upon at all in society or i can decide that i don't want to work and i want to stay home and i'm gonna have a husband or spouse that provides for me and that's also totally okay and nobody cares yeah. or i can do like a combination of both you know, I can work part time and not work part time, or or do whatever. Like I have the freedom to do any of it, and not be not be attacked yeah. for what I'm doing. Like no one's gonna look at me and say, "Oh, you're such a disgrace to your family," or "Oh, you're such a disappointment because you're a stay at home you're a stay at home wife," or "Oh, you you're nothing. You're just you're nothing because you don't have a job and you don't go anywhere." But like. Yeah. If, if you were to do that, it'd be terrible. Yeah, that's true. If uh, you stayed at home, people would think you're just a worthless piece of crap who depends on their, their wife to take care of them. Yeah. Like, it's kind of messed up. I don't get that feeling. I feel like I'm almost better off in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to, to gender roles. And I mean... To me, I thought that was sort of the point of the feminism movement of the past was women and men should be equal, so women need to have the right to work, and men should, women should have all the same rights and whatever. But it seems that our society doesn't really want that. It doesn't really want equality between women and men and women. Yeah. It wants women to be able to do a lot of the same things men can do, but still wants to have this weird separation between the genders. And I mean, there are differences between the genders, so we're always going to have some differences and some, you know, separations there. But it seems that our society wants to take this in a, in a weird dir direction. I mean, I don't want to just use the word regressive, but I mean, kind it, of it. it's regressive. I don't know what else to call it. Like It seems very backwards. I, ha I have a lot of friends, a lot of women friends, as most women do, and, you know, you talk to them about things, and most of them are like, yeah, women should have the right to work, and they should have the right to their body and make whatever choices that they want, and they shouldn't have anyone oppressing them or telling them what they can or can't wear or where they should and shouldn't go. But at the same time, they expect their, their boyfriends to pay for dinner every time they go out. Or if they're going somewhere, he's the one that drives because that's the man's job is to drive her around. And if they don't open the door for him... It's a whole hoop to do. Like, it's a big problem. But if a man expected any of those things from his partner, like, no, people would think he's crazy. Yeah, I mean, not even, <coughs> not only that. But, I mean, even if a man expects the typical gender roles of a woman, if, a w if he expects, you know, his partner to, to do the typical things that women typically did, oftentimes he's seen as being misogynist or sexist because he wants the their relationship to be fairly traditional but if a woman wants that then it's just it's just it's fine. just her choice but 
if the woman expects the man to be providing for her, then she's not just making the choice about herself. Yeah. She's saying, I expect this of you as a man. So yeah. why is it any different when a man expects the woman to... To do the same. To do the same and fill traditional gender roles. Yeah. It, I don't know. It just seems really backwards. Like, if I want to be a stay-at-home housewife and have a husband that goes to work every day and takes care of me, like, I am free to have that right. But why should I be able to dictate what my husband has to do? Yeah. Like, why should I be able to say, I'm not going to work, so you need to because I'm not going to. Not that, you know, being a stay-at-home mom isn't a job, because it is, and it's very important. Yeah. But, like, it's just, it it seems like you want to have it both ways and have it neither way at the same time. Yeah, I mean, at the same time you said the stay-at-home mom, but, I mean, a stay-at-home dad seems to me that it could just be just as important. I yeah. mean, the stay-at-home parent, the person that's being a parent, doing the cleaning, whatever, that's a, a Taking care big of job and responsibility no matter whether it's the man or the woman the same way whether the man or the woman's working who who gives a shit yeah it doesn't matter it seems like the only people that that should give a shit are the two people in the relationship or more people in the relationship yeah. if, However, if, if you, you, know. <laughs> you do that you know whatever the people in the relationship are the ones being affected and so it should ultimately be their decision yeah so why as a society should we be breathing down people's throats and being pissed off when a husband wants his wife to be the one that cleans because he's the one that works all day? And the woman, if a woman's okay with that, why, do, why does that matter? If the woman's not okay with that, well, then they have a problem with their relationship and they, they need to work that out. But I don't see how that is anybody else's responsibility, or not responsibility, but anybody else's business. Yeah, it's not. And we are living in a time where it's everybody's business. <laughs> like, I I have not typical, as of right now, my, I, I consider myself a liberal, but when you talk about feminist issues in the liberal community, like, I don't agree with a lot of it because I think it's freaking crazy. I think that they have gone way too far and you're turning something that was once equality into, well, the only way we can be equal is that women now need to be the oppressor because they've been oppressed for so long. And it just seems, it just seems crazy to me and seems backwards to me. Yeah. And people, when I talk to people about this, I kind of feel like they put me down a little because they just assume that, oh, I'm just being oppressed by someone because why else would I ever have these thoughts? Like, no, I'm just not an idiot. That's why I have these thoughts. They treat you like a uncle Tom for women. So when, aunt tammy i don't know yeah sure <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's I, just unfortunate it's, it's just the patriarchy you know yeah <laughs> all those men yeah so i mean that that so i guess not really switch topics but um i mean you saw the the red pill movie right the documentary yeah, yeah. okay yeah i mean so i mean it's just it's that yeah. It's literally that. I mean... If you haven't seen this documentary, you definitely should. It's called The Red Pill. Uh, it's a documentary about the men's rights movement and men's rights activists. Yeah. And it's not the movie you think it is. It's not just a bunch of women-hating douchebags. What? Oh, I mean... I mean, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of them. Well, I, I mostly just mean the... The filmmaker... Is... Feminine... Was a feminine... Whatever. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, so anyway, so she's a she's a feminist and then she while was it she's researching rape culture, she runs into some information about the men's rights movement, MRAs, male right activists. And then from there she realizes that a lot of these guys, or at least the ones she meets anyway, are just guys who have had problems typically in family court and just don't they just feel like they've been shit on. By a society that's like, well, you're a man, so, you know, you don't really matter. Who gives a shit matter. about you? you? You're not oppressed. Yeah. You couldn't possibly have problems that other people aren't going through because you're a man. That, that's impossible. Yeah, like, how could men have problems? Like, they, they're they the top of the food chain. Like, it just it doesn't yeah. make sense. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, even though, what is it, 80% of suicides are men, so... I mean, that's how men... Obviously, men have problems. Yeah. They're killing themselves way more than women. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't prove much of anything, but, I mean, it does say, obviously, there are some problems. Yeah. People don't kill themselves for nothing. Yeah, uh, most people. Maybe I mean, there's a couple, uh, yeah, but... Whatever, you know. 
yeah usually it's depression and whatever so if nothing else it shows that maybe men suffer from depression more which if that's the case then we should at least talk about it we should at least discuss it we should but you know men can't talk about their feelings yeah that's true that's (laughs) yeah that's another problem they they do and and society's kind of turned a little more on this now but a lot of that's because of all of these new new genders that have popped up that make it okay for men to talk about their feelings because they don't identify solidly as men anymore they're somewhere along the spectrum like why can't you just talk about your feelings why do you have to be something to be able to talk about your feelings yeah that makes sense i talk about my feelings (laughs) i feel like eating some tacos i better get in the kitchen to make something (laughs) i said tacos not sandwich anyway moving on (laughs) um yeah so i mean and similarly like what is it 93 percent of work face workplace fatalities are men so i mean we hear all the time that there's not enough women in the politics or whatever but why why do feminists never seem to care about women in in construction jobs or or coal mining jobs or steel mill factory jobs or really dangerous jobs yeah like women don't typically there are some but they don't really work in those fields and like is it because they have super high fatality rates or that they're really dangerous or is it that women realize that they have a luxury to pick and choose where they want to work typically with men until recently, they were predominant like breadwinners, as they say, and so they had to take a job, and they had to work somewhere, despite how dangerous it was, yeah. and they needed whatever job was going to pay them the most money, and those jobs did pay a lot of money. They paid really well, because they were so dangerous, and now like you don't see women fighting for those jobs. You see women fighting to get into corporate America, and trying to get into politics, and getting into safer, physically safer fields. Yeah, like, I've never heard of, you know, women, feminists for women's draft of the military or something, yeah. you know? Like, why why wouldn't you want equal treatment in the military? Yeah, in like... In terms of being you, drafted, why? You want to be able to join the military and fight and be part of the army and the military and the navy and become an officer and make your way up the ranks? Like, good for you if you think that supporting our military is something you want to do with your life. And I know that, obviously, there's some people are going to argue, well... In terms of like family or whatever, you don't want both parents or whatever. But that's easy. They'd, they'd be easy to solve if you just don't let both parents get drafted. Yeah, you and send out a draft for both of them, and they decide which one goes and stays. Yeah, or with like a complicated family structure of like divorce and step parents and whatever, it might get a little bit more complicated. But we we can figure that out. I mean, it's not that complicated. Yeah, I mean, even if it is, that doesn't just mean like oh, we should just just men no women like why why is that okay yeah just because it's a little bit complicated to figure out some of the details to make things fair that's when is when has difficulty stopped us from from fairness and justice before isn't that what we're fighting for so who cares if it's hard yeah and like maybe this is a little backwards of me but i feel very lucky and thankful that we live in a society where i'm not drafted and where i'm not required to do these overly physically demanding jobs like i can choose to do them but they're not expected of me they're not something that society in the past has dictated this is just a job for you right. like i like knowing that i i can work in a cushy office if i want and i don't have to haul lumber and cut down trees and do like crazy jobs like that i could but i don't have to yeah and i like that I like that I have that, like, I guess, unfairness. It is. No, it's just, it's unfairness. Like, I don't have to do those things, but you do, and you're required to do those things. You're required to sign up to be drafted. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of that. Especially. Like, I'm not. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It just seems that modern feminists don't really care about equality. They care about power for women they want control of society and they think that men and the patriarchy have all the control and power and they need to take it back somehow but i mean even even if most of our politicians are men how does that give me more power how does that do me any good that there's a a bunch of people with penises in some building you know on the other side of the country 
making decisions that aren't even necessarily things I agree with. Yeah. How does that give me more power? Uh, penises? I don't <laughs> Penis, know. Penises. Penises. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking of penises, um, another, well, okay, speaking, speaking of penises, penises sometimes go in buttholes, and buttholes sometimes have colons. I mean, well, buttholes always have colons. Sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes buttholes have prostates. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all prostates are in buttholes, but not all buttholes have prostates. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, like another th- another thing is that breast cancer and prostate cancer have similar mortality rates, and yet breast cancer has way more funding. And way more support. And that yeah. doesn't even take into account penises and testicle cancer i don't yeah. know what penises have to do with that but you know do they have can do you, can you get dick cancer i don't know but they're next to the testicles i was trying to wrap it around it be like you get like a giant tumor that just sucks uh, them all together yeah i guess i don't know you just have like, you just have tumor <laughs> penis <laughs> it's just it's ribbed <laughs> it's, it's ribbed for no one's pleasure but yeah like how many how many breast cancer there's a whole month for breast cancer yeah there's marches and parades and those little pink ribbon stickers and like I work at a bakery we do we've done donuts and cookies like it's a huge thing there's hundreds of races all over the country especially the US like breast cancer is a big thing everyone's worried about it but nobody nobody talks about prostate cancer except for the except for that weird doctor guy on that public service oh announcement yeah. like the boy i think he's like really german i was about yeah. to try and do a german accent and it just failed he, he's like I a stopped. super german guy talking about the more you know german. and getting fingers poked up your butt to make sure you're not dying yeah I like know. it's ridiculously hilarious but it is a serious problem yeah but uh but yes i mean and then when we look at domestic abuse, because obviously then people will say, oh, but men are, men are terrible and they're always beating up on all the women. But yeah, really... Mushroom stamps. Oh, what? Mushroom stamps. <laughs> <laughs> mushroom stamps. But, but domestic abuse, like, it's not just a one-way street. I grew up in a family where my parents weren't always very pleasant with each other, but it was that they weren't pleasant with each other. Like... Yeah. My, my mom came after my dad with a baseball bat one night and we had to run down the block because the police were coming it wasn't because my dad was beating up on her it was that she just came after him with a baseball bat like it, it's crazy and then what happened they told my dad he had to leave for the night so that we could come home yeah i've had a similar experience when my mom was really drunk one time and causing a mess in front of my apartment and then the police showed up and they arrested my stepdad because i don't know because he was a he was a guy he's the man i don't they were like oh he must be the problem that's literally what they told us and there was no reason that he should have been taken away he didn't do anything he literally wasn't doing anything she was the problem she was being drunk and belligerent in our front yard and he came outside to smoke halfway through, and then they just they just took him away for no reason, absolutely no reason. I, it, it's just crazy, and I know that there's a lot of other people out there. I mean, they might. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, but in my case, it it wasn't even a domestic abuse, abuse thing. It yeah. literally had nothing to do with them. It just had to do with my mom being drunk and belligerent, and they took him away as if it was about domestic abuse, and it had nothing to do with that. No one was getting abused. She was just being drunk and belligerent, and had. And needed to, I don't know, go sleep it off and yeah. and whatever. Or come inside. If she had just went inside and stopped being drunk and belligerent, then it would have been fine. But she wouldn't. And to the point where the neighbors called the police. And then the police showed up. Yeah. And then rather than saying, okay, we're going to escort you off these people's property because they don't want you there anymore. They took away my stepdad who, who was not doing anything but... Presumably trying to calm her down, immediately not doing a very good job, <laughs> but not not using any force, not even using a harsh tone. I mean, he wasn't doing anything. Yeah. He was smoking a fucking cigarette on the sidewalk, and they took him away because he was a guy. Like, it, it's just ridiculous. And they admitted it. They admitted that it's because he was the man, so they took him away. And despite trying to plead with him and say, say he, he has nothing to do with this, it's all her, she's just drunk and belligerent. They go, yeah, well, you know, we're cops, and it's our experience that it's usually the man's fault, and so we took him. They arrested him. Like, why? It just it doesn't make sense. 
Uh, especially because, I mean, the actual numbers are that what is it, like 55% of domestic abuse is done by men and 45% is done by women. It's almost half. But, you know, when, when a, a woman's abusing a man, it doesn't get taken seriously because... What is what is she going to be able to do? <laughs> like, what's a what's a five foot two little girl, you know, going to be able to do to her three hundred pound husband? Uh, like, I don't know, baseball bat, yeah. glass cup, uh, a gun, a rolling pin, knife. computer, TV. Like, you can hook <laughs> some crap at people. Weapons. It, it can be really dangerous, but people won't take it seriously because how could this person be abusing you? And like. I don't know. I feel like if this was really a feminist issue, they would be like, well, no, women are capable of defending themselves and attacking just as much as the men are. So, the, you know, it, it, the number should be even. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how can you say women should be in the military because they're perfectly capable of combat and then say women are harmless and can't hurt men? And like, just victimized by everyone. And just victimized. Then why would you want women in the military? They would yeah. just be victims who can't hurt men. That's it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, it, it's, just, it's so backwards. And I'm sure, you know, someone can make post some comments about this and has plenty to say to the contrary, but I don't know. Yeah. It seems really backwards when you say that women can't protect themselves or defend themselves in a domestic violence situation, but in every other situation, they're equal. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, like, domestic violence is a serious problem, and there are women that get victimized. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's a terrible thing. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not trying to make light of that at all. Like, it's a terrible things that happen, but women can be doing the terrible things just as much as the men can. And typically, women have a, have a different way of abusing. Like, you can mentally and emotionally abuse someone, and it's still abuse. And men do it, too. You know, they make... People make each other feel worthless and feel useless and feel like they have no no purpose and nowhere to escape to and that they're, they're property and they're stuck and they can't go anywhere. And women can do that to men just as much as men can do it to women. And if you want to ignore that and say that it's not true, you're just wrong. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, and then, I mean, so then kind of the only thing I feel that anyone has left to argue is is the wage gap, and then that's just a myth. It's been debunked on multiple occasions. We know that it, there's not there's not different pay for equal work. I mean, I'm sure there are in isolated situations, and probably plenty of times where some sexist or whatever is like, no, I'm going to kind of pay women as much. But, I mean, there's probably plenty of situations where there's a woman boss who doesn't pay her men employees as much or a man employee who pays his women employees more because he wants them to be around him more yeah like i mean i mean just think about think about these two situations in the one situation you have someone who literally doesn't care whether you're a man or a woman and he's just basing your income on how much you work and maybe maybe because of his own uh faults or whatever he doesn't realize some of the times that some people are working whatever to the point where he pays his he pays the men employees a little bit more than the women but he's well intentioned he has no he's not meaning to do that and whatever or in the other situation you have uh some old orange guy with a wig who walks into women's dressing rooms and grabs them by the pussy and uh pays them a little extra so they'll be around him all the time who who's, who's the, the bad guy, guy? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> if that if if women were really getting paid less, there wouldn't be men in the work field. There wouldn't be men in the workforce at all. What employer would say, "Well, if you guys are gonna do the exact same job and you're exactly the same qualified, why would I not just hire the woman because I can pay her less and me make more money? She gets job, I make more money. If all I employ are women, then no one knows that they're making less money because I don't have any men employed, so they wouldn't know that men are making more. Like, if that was really true, that would be what's happening right now, and it's not. And, and the, I think the biggest objection... I'm sorry. The biggest objection I hear to this is that people say something like, well, they, you know, the employers, they don't, they don't want women because they get pregnant and have to leave and whatever. But, I mean... I, I could see that argument being really strong if we actually had, like, paid family leave and shit. Yeah. But then again, if you have paid family leave where guys can take it, which a lot of the times, you know, the attempt is, well, sometimes the mom can't leave, and so we want the father to be able to be at home yeah. because what we care about is families. 
which I think we should care about. Anyway, if we care about families, then sometimes the men can leave too. So then you wouldn't, you still wouldn't really have the argument because you would never know whether this guy is going to possibly be leaving an, instead yeah. of his wife or whatever. But even then, like, yeah, maybe they're going to leave, but so what? You, you're going to be paying them over the entire life of their career less money yeah, for presumably the same job. Money. So you're saving money and then they leave and you just replace them with another woman. Why would that be a big deal? Yeah. Like, yeah, training and stuff costs, but, I don't know, people leave all the time, and yeah, I guess, to some extent, yeah, like, if women are having to leave to whatever, you got to train more women, but, or more employees, at least, but at the same time, like, that's going to, people are going to leave to some extent regardless, and so unless you're actually saying that women are leaving more, yeah, I mean, when, when, when she gets pregnant, it's not like you don't have lots of time to find someone to fill in. Yeah, like, it's not like you, you don't got have months to plan. Yeah, I mean, by the time she, you know, is showing or tells yeah. her employer, it'll probably yeah, be less true. time than that. But still, I mean, it's not just like a, a last minute thing where suddenly, like, oh, what are we gonna do now? We gotta scramble to hire your replacement or something. It's yeah, it's not that at all. It's so I mean, I could see that happening in some situations, and I'm sure, like I said, there's plenty of like just sexist people out there that are like, oh, I'm gonna pay women less or whatever. But there's gonna be times when. People are going to pay women more for the same reasons or yeah. opposite reasons or whatever whatever you want to say. Like, I, I've worked in quite a few jobs and most of them, like, not big corporate things, but still jobs with wages that are dependent on experience and dependent on how much knowledge you have and dependent on how hard you work. And I've never had a job where the men in the similar position as me are making more money. And most of them, I've ended up making more money because, I don't know, I did a better job than them. Yeah. Like, not because I would, uh, I'm a woman, I would feel. I feel like if I'm making more money than you, it's because I'm doing a better job than you. Yeah. It's not always the case. Like, there's issues with that, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's fairly even. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's really hard to calculate equal pay for equal work or whatever anyway. I mean, you have to take into account a lot of things. But not only that, I mean... We kind of, as a society, don't really make... You're not really getting paid for your work initially. You know what I mean? Like, when you get a job, you're not getting paid based on your work. You're getting paid based on your resume or your interview or whatever, you know? Yeah, your Your starting rate... I mean, unless you do, like, a working interview where you show your qualifications or whatever through that, then you're getting paid based on your previous experience and education and whatever. Yeah. And your ability to negotiate in the interview or whatever. So, after that, then, yeah, like, job performance and whatever is going to change that. But if your starting point is that you're getting paid more than somebody else then you're not going to be getting paid equal f- equally for the same work. Yeah. Because you're getting paid more because you convince them to pay you more. Yeah. So if I go into an interview and my friend goes into an interview, regardless of who that person is, and they manage to negotiate a higher salary than me, and we do the same job, we're not getting paid the same for the same amount of work. So even if you could somehow prove that women were getting paid less, that you would still have to prove that it's not just that. Yeah. It's not just women negotiating less or whatever. And we know that there's a lot more to it, like women take different jobs and stuff. So, I mean, it's just really hard to even calculate that. But again, like I said, you wouldn't really know that women are just getting paid less because they're women and not because they negotiated less or whatever and so started with less money. Yeah. So, like, what do you do in that situation? Do you have to do employers have an obligation to then say, hey, these people are doing the same job. I now have to pay them the same amount, even though this person started out making more. Or, you know, who's, whose responsibility is that? The employers? Or is it the employee's responsibility to make sure that they're negotiating properly with their employer to make, to get the best deal they can, to get the highest wage they can, to yeah. get a raise whenever they need it? I mean, isn't that sort of the the nature of an employer-employee relationship is is it's essentially a contract and we've agreed on a set amount of money and if you if as an employer uh if i am able to negotiate talk somebody down to working for less money then that's our agreement and it doesn't really it's not affected by other people at all so i'm not i'm not basing it on necessarily on like oh you're a man and you're a woman i'm basing it on how much money i can afford to pay you yeah and 
you're basing it on how much money you think you deserve and how much you want and whatever and then we try and find an agreement and that's what your your money would be based on yeah and beyond that then maybe through performance evaluations or whatever you might get a set raise but if or not a set raise but you know a raise that's determined by the evaluation but if we're just doing raises based on evaluations then like if say um, a certain level of production or a certain amount of improvement gives you a certain raise, but I started with more money than someone else. If our evaluations are the same, presumably I still have more, more money, money unless it, unless the evaluation is set up in such a way that it'll adjust for this to say like, Oh, well you're only doing as well as this person. So you won't get more of a raise. We'll just get moved to this level. Then that would be the case. But otherwise we're not basing pay on literally the amount of work people are doing usually anyway yeah like it's just it's so it's so subjective and up to each and every circumstance like you're not i don't think that there's a really good way to do that unless you're just saying well everyone makes minimum wage now <laughs> yeah that'd be terrible and then <laughs> everyone's making the same amount of money for right. every job and that's and then it's that's just equal pay <laughs> and then it's just communism yeah well yeah but then it wouldn't be equal pay for equal work either it'd just be equal pay yeah I mean, equal pay is equal pay, isn't it? <laughs> if I'm making as much money as a man, it's a job well done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think the main thing to consider is that men and women both have societal struggles. And it's not just one side being oppressed. It's that these struggles can like oppress people as individuals. Yeah. But you have to look at the individual. We can't just look at everyone as a statistic and say, you're a man and these good things happen to these men. So therefore it's happening to you or you're benefiting or, or something just for, because you have a penis. Or like you're a woman. So you're being, you're being victimized and just taken advantage of all the time. And the world is just crapping on you because it's the patriarchy ruling everything. Like I don't feel that way at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's just, it's very dependent on a case-to-case -case basis. It really goes both ways, too. Because, I mean, you can't say, like, oh, women, you know, women have a right to choose with their bodies. So, therefore, you as a woman have that privilege if you live in a state where you don't have access to an abortion. Then you don't really have that. Then you don't really have that. So, it's not, I can't then say, oh, women have, women have the right to an abortion. So, end of story. Yeah. If you are being, if the government is, has been set up in such a way that it's uh, stopping you from getting access to family planning that other women are getting, or something that, if we've decided that women deserve this thing, or that people deserve this thing anyway, and you don't have it because of whatever reason, then I can't, I can't hold that over your head and say, yeah, but you have this when you don't have it yeah i mean it, it doesn't make any sense to try and argue that way because you don't have it so i can't say you that you have something that you clearly don't have it just doesn't make any sense yeah i i don't know i feel like people are just trying to complain that there's just a broad brush being painted over everyone while also complaining because you should paint a broad brush over everyone <laughs> Like, yeah, I, it just seems so contradictory to me. Like, you can't, you can't say that everyone has it this way, but they don't. I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's move on. Let's get on to some other news. Um, this wasn't related to International Women's Day, but uh, there's a story about so Facebook's gonna start flagging fake news stories. And so, supposedly, they'll give you a little warning, and then it'll tell you, uh, like, some sources that dispute it, which, I mean, I don't know. I kind of have mixed feelings about this, you know? Yeah. Because, on the one hand, I don't want, uh, I don't know, I don't think Facebook should decide what's real. I don't think Facebook should be the gatekeepers, or the media should be the gatekeepers of the truth. Yeah. Because who are they to say what's what's real or not? I mean, obviously, to some extent, journalists are supposed to have a certain level of research, research skills to say, you know, to figure out truth from fiction. But at the same time, you know, politics and all that play in so much that we see often most 
most of the time it seems that journalists are just so blinded by their own political ideology that as long as it agrees with their preconceived political notions, they're just willing to accept it. I mean, not always, obviously. Yeah, not always. Like, you know, there's there's facts and there's not facts and there's truth and not truth. And you can't ignore truth because you don't believe it. Yeah. You can't ignore facts because they disagree with what you already think. Like, you can be wrong about things. I can be wrong about things. Anybody can be wrong about things. And you can be right about things. And you need to realize that you were wrong about some things. And so you need to have a different point of view. Read about a different point of view. Yeah. And read an article that Facebook doesn't decide you need to see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if if like the, the algorithm or whatever is set up in such a way that it's really good about doing it all the time like it's any time there's a competing view i mean to some extent obviously certain views are just nonsense or aren't based on fact but so you don't want to dispute a true claim with with obvious nonsense and bullshit but at the same time if it's just based on like polit- p- political crap oftentimes most people just look at some of the facts and kind of cherry pick and then the other side looks at the other facts and cherry picks and it comes to completely different conclusions and really the truth is kind of somewhere in between yeah so if they're doing a good job of really kind of giving both sides that you can look at all the facts and and think for yourself then that's great but if they're just like only doing it one-sided where any time like a conservative source comes out and says something they're like oh here's what the liberals had to say and you're wrong every single time and they don't do it the same way for the liberal sources yeah then they're clearly not actually interested in the truth yeah but i think that that would be it's definitely an interesting idea to flag things as not real like sure still post them so people can still read the nonsense if they want but say like there's all of these things that are saying that this article you're reading is wrong yeah i mean i think the important thing is is the source disputing it i think is more important than the, the flag itself yeah. I think just saying there's a there's things that dispute this. So like they they're flagging it and saying untrue, but at the same time like if you look in the picture that was posted, it's just like a little exclamation point cuz or point in a in a triangle or whatever. It doesn't necessarily say like, "Oh, this story's false." It just says disputed by Snopes and PolitiFact or whatever, and then presumably you can go and decide for yourself after you look at all the information. But again, if it's one-sided, it's it's just going to be bullshit. And yeah, if it's, it's going to be the same problem, just... And then I guess the other problem, too, is that it's, it's nice in theory that people then have the option to see the other side of things and to read things that they don't agree with and get these new ideas and whatever. Um, but at the same time, I it could have the negative consequence of making things more polarized because it could just end up with people seeing that and then going, Oh, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to read it. It's bullshit. Not even going to look at it. Yeah. that's. True. And then not even not looking at it, not looking at the, the sources that dispute it. So they're not really even thinking about it and they're just going, Oh, that's bullshit. So they're just never looking at anything that disagrees with their standpoint, especially if, Facebook does do it one sided and they just do it to the liberal side, then you're going to see liberals that are like, oh, I'm never going to, I'm not going to click on that. The same way that probably most liberals already do with things like Fox News or Breitbart or whatever. They just go, oh, that's that's not a trustworthy source. So I'm not even going to give it the time of day, even though sometimes there's going to, of course, be facts of truth in Fox News stories that the liberal media might not cover. So having access to that information might be a good thing because you might learn something. But this might not do that. But yeah, it might not do that. Either. It'll be interesting to see how it rolls out. Yeah, I, th- I think it'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, let's move on. There was also the... Let's see when this happened. Like last week. Um, let's see. The Supreme Court ruled that racism can upend jury verdicts and said that racism is <coughs> racism and jury deliber- <laughs> sorry racism and jury deliberations is so insidious that verdicts can be thrown out even following convictions a divided supreme court ruled on monday so what basically they ruled out that or they ruled that if um if racism goes on in jury deliberation essentially then they can throw it out even after conviction so um the the actual example is basically somebody in the uh, in the jury was found to have said something racist. I don't even remember exactly. 
Um, well, I don't know. I guess uh, maybe there wasn't even a real life example. But they said, suppose somebody in the jury room says it's an automobile accident. Uh, or say it's an automobile uh, I'm having a trouble speaking right now. <clears throat> Sorry. Suppose somebody in the jury room, say it's an automobile accident, says, what do you expect of women drivers? Women shouldn't be allowed to drive cars. Every woman I know is a terrible driver. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know. What if they do say that? Like, what if it's true that every woman that they know that drives is a terrible driver? Like, they're basing information on their personal experience. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, I don't know. So, I guess the thing that I was thinking about this is, I mean, the point of our jury system is that they're impartial, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if... If the jurors can't put aside their own bias of race or or sexism ahead of time or whatever, their bias of sex, um, yeah. then yeah, I guess it shouldn't be. I mean, we shouldn't obviously just let people decide ver jury verdicts based on how they, they think about people. If you get a bunch of people that literally admit that they think women are bad drivers, then yeah, those people probably shouldn't be in charge of of a jury the same way you do that for any case so i think in a lot of ways i do agree with what they're saying no that, uh, yeah no it, it makes sense makes i mean sense. you you want impartiality so if people are admittedly saying like not I, impartial. that i i think all of this group of people are this way and they can't let that bias go then yeah they shouldn't be part of the, the, the jury the same yeah. way that if if uh you go into a jury if you're on jury duty and it's a case about an accident and they ask, like, have you ever owned this car, this type of car? And then you go, yeah, I've owned that type of car. And they go, oh, you're biased because you, you know about that type of car or whatever, right? Yeah. So they throw you out. So why wouldn't it be that same sort of situation? Like, how do you feel about white people? Oh, you hate them? Probably not a good idea that you serve on the jury. That makes sense. Or how do you feel about women? Oh, you think women are all a bunch of useless sex objects? Then you probably shouldn't serve on a jury. I mean... Yeah, I never thought about that. I, so, yeah, I don't know. I guess this this really doesn't sort of make a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, when you first hear it, it kind of sounds like, what? Yeah, it sounds like they're just making a bunch of problems out of nothing. But, I mean, to, like, to no, an extent... No, it, it makes sense. It, like, the jurors are supposed to be impartial. They're supposed to be able to leave all of their biases outside of the courtroom and base which, all their decisions yeah. solely based on the evidence that's been provided to them at this specific time. Yeah. I think then... To an extent, it kind of has to. We have to look at how extreme this is going to be. Like, if somebody just makes a joke or says something that is assumed to be racist, like if I just state actual facts and somebody goes, "That's racist," and then they throw it out, obviously that would be complete bullshit. So I mean, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, it depends on. If we're talking about judges and whatever. Hopefully, they make good decisions. That's the point of our judges, right? Is that they make good decisions. If our judges, if we don't trust our judges to make good decisions, then then we probably we kind of have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, let's move on. So this is kind of back to the women's movement, I guess. Uh, oh, Ivanka Trump, Ivanka Trump. <laughs> finds her cause, and Democrats love it, according to CNBC. But uh, I don't know. I don't love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it. it's a bad child care plan. It sounded really good. I was really hopeful for it. I was really thinking, okay, Ivanka, maybe she's got some ideas. And uh, family leave and tax credits for health, or, uh, child care, it sounds good. It makes sense. Like, you know, if, if women are working and the men are working, who's going to take care of the kids? Child care. So you... Having some kind of credit to be able to pay for that sounds like a good idea, but it's not that simple, and it's not it's not what it sounded like it was gonna be it it's yeah, so let's see Here's a, supposedly analysts and me I agree <laughs> <laughs> found that seventy percent of the benefits would go towards households making a hundred thousand dollars or more well. I don't know. That sounds pretty stupid. It it sounds stupid, but at the same time, like, who has money to pay for childcare? Like, childcare is really expensive. Yeah. In some places, it's it's 
really expensive. Like, there's people that are spending an entire paycheck on childcare. Like, they have to spend half of their income paying for daycare so that they can go to work to have money to pay for daycare. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's stupid that 70% is going to people over that make over $100,000. It seems yeah. like if you make over $100,000... You probably don't need the government's help paying for your children. <laughs> yeah. If you don't make over a hundred thousand dollars a year, it seems like you probably might need a little bit more help paying for your children. Yeah. I mean, it, assuming that you need Which help you paying know. for your children. If we're talking about actual people that have fallen into hard times and need help, I I don't think people that make a hundred thousand dollars a year have fallen on on the same sorts of hard times as people that make a lot less than a hundred thousand dollars a year yeah because yeah the estimated after tax income for was making less than forty thousand would increase by just twenty dollars so it's only going to help people making forty thousand dollars or less by about twenty dollars that's that's nothing it's I mean, that's not, not even worth the money that they're going to be spending like the government yeah. the amount of money that the government is going to be spending on this i I feel like, I don't know, it, the numbers just don't add up to me. But yeah, it's what, I mean, $20 isn't going to do shit. What, yeah. are, what is $20 going to do? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. And uh, and it would cost a total of $116 billion over the next decade. That's great. I'm so glad we're just going to we're gonna it's give... It's $116 billion over the next 10 years, but you know, you're only going to get 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do those numbers make any sense well because if you look at the upper if you look at it between 100 and 200 thousand dollars you'll get about 360 dollar boost which still even then isn't isn't even that much money but it's not even that much money but i don't know if i made a hundred thousand dollars a year i don't know that i would need the government to give me 360 dollars yeah and i certainly probably would be okay giving 360 dollars to somebody who really really needed it over the course of a year (laughs) Yeah. Rather than me getting it and them getting twenty dollars, but I mean I don't know. That's just me. I'm not telling. I'm not saying other people should feel bad or need to do this. I'm just saying this is, sounds like a really dumb idea, and I don't see any reason for it. Yeah. Either, either you think people need help, in which case this is a dumb idea because it's not really helping people, or you don't think people need help, in which case why this would you? This is a dumb idea. Why would you want it? Yeah. So I, I don't see how this is benefiting anybody. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, I think that probably going to about wrap it up for today. All right. Anything else you want to say? here with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Anything else you want to say about women or Women's Day or any of that? Penises. That is all. <laughs>